What's up famo? I'm at the studio today and I've got a special guest with me. She's watching Frozen 2, so she can't be bothered. I am picking up from being at a launch conference for work and playing drums tomorrow at church. And thirdly, I'm doing some uh, way overdue videos on some gear that I've got, the Hollyland Cosmo um, C1 transmitters, and then also the uh, SolidCom C1 uh, wireless comm. So we use these all week at a conference for you know production purposes, and also got a couple of cymbals in that I've been waiting on. Got my 20 inch Masters Thin back, and this is one you guys have seen before, 18 inch Dark Energy, one of my favorite crashes, and then a new guy, new addition to the family eight inch Modern Essentials Splash. Got the logo LED I need to put up. I'm trying to decide if I wanna paint this black or not. Just a lot of work. So yeah, lots of great things going on. Kind of busy day, but also need to get some rehearsal in for tomorrow. There's one song that I don't know very well, and Nate just sent me the multi for it. So I'm gonna try to get like a slider set up at church as well. We got a new cage. Just yet another thing that I haven't talked to you guys about is new cage that they built at the church, which is great. Gonna get a little rehearsal in, just finished up some B-roll of these different pieces of gear, and then I'm gonna pack up and get home for the day, and then I'll probably be at the church super early in the morning. So that's the plan. Okay, I am at the church now. I just got my camera out. Let me do a couple things up here. They just finished building a drum cage, and it's kind of hard to see in the dark here, but um, kind of a DIY cage. It's incredible. It's very well built. Uh, built it super well. I'm really, really well done in, in construction-wise. So I am going to set up some, you know, of my stuff, cymbals, snare, that kind of stuff. But I'm also trying to figure out if I can set up a slider shot. So right now there's a camera inside this is just the camera they're using it's inside the cage and so i got one of my sliders from the studio you guys always ask what kind of slider i use it's a gvm slider um i'll have it linked in the description of this video but i want to know if i can kind of set it up here you know get kind of like this shot or maybe even like you know this shot sliding uh you know the danger is if it's outside the cage you get just tons of reflection of the plexi but you guys have seen my previous videos from royal wood Basically, if the light on the inside is significant enough to overcome the glare of the outside and I can get the camera to focus through to my face, it should do okay even though there's plexi between um, myself and the camera. So that's what I'm going to do now. It really is just set up the slider and get some of my stuff set up and just see if I can get things. Oh, and the lights. Right now there's no lights in here. So I just brought my little LED lights and I'm going to attach them to the uh, overheads. Now there's no soundproofing in here at all, so you know my expectations for the sound quality uh, of the capture, at least for now, is pretty low. Um, it isolates as far as in the room, you know. I mean, the drums are not going to be loud out here, but I mean, just the uh, audio quality inside the cage because there's no proofing at all. It's just everything's going to be like a really, really harsh overhead, really compressed, harsh overhead because the sound is just gonna go crazy that's my thought anyways as far as the capture so I know I'm kind of like being Debbie down I'm just being realistic it's it's incredible the cage is incredible it's awesome that it's been built and it's amazing um, the whole remodel looks incredible I'm just um, you know just kind of trying to dissect the the pressure points for me of what I can do and how I can get the best capture um, so yeah I'll work on that for a little bit tonight And I'm actually pretty happy with this shot. Um, it's gonna get this really cool panning shot on the opposite side that I normally get. So I got both those on power, so that should just stay there and go.
And then in here, I've got my two lights set up, number one, and then over there, number two. And I've got all my symbols. So I'm rocking the PSTX Swiss flanger stack. I've got my 22 inch, I guess I can turn the light on for you guys. 20 inch, sorry, Masters Thin. Uh, new edition I already talked about. The eight inch Modern Essential Splash, 18 inch Dark Energy, 15 inch Masters Dark, 21 inch Dark Energy Mark One, and then the PSTX uh, stack. So that's the setup in here. And I'm pretty much done for the night. I'm gonna load my stuff out and then go. But one thing, and I debated whether to actually show this because you could argue it defeats the purpose, but I hope maybe you get something from this. But, um, you know, I'm a volunteer at the church. Uh, I've been on full-time staff at churches for years and years. And so um, this is a new thing for me just to be a volunteer. And so tonight um, I purchased black Velcro. And as you can see here on the stage, we've got some crazy cables happening. So I'm just gonna take like 10 minutes and clean up. And I'm not gonna say anything, and that's where I was debating whether doing, because the people that go to my church see this video, they'll know that I did it. But the point is I'm just gonna do this. I'm not necessarily gonna tell anybody and broadcast, which is again why the uh, conflict here. Um, but the point is not to get praise for this, but I'm here, it's gonna take 10 minutes. And so I just wanna encourage you volunteers, especially in the drum cage, if you're drummers, I'm gonna work in there as well because these guys have been busting it, other volunteers, uh, building the cage, putting cables up, lots of stuff. And so one thing that can be really difficult to do when you're trying to get things done, moving really quick, I know, cause I've been there, is stuff like cable management. So I'm gonna take 10 minutes and just uh, cut some Velcro ties and tie these cables up. And they may come in tomorrow and be like, oh cool, this is great. Or they may come in and not even notice, right? That's that's beside, beside the point. Um, it's just something that I can do and it's helpful and it cleans up everyone else's station. So I'm gonna take a few minutes and um, do some tables. This cost me, seven dollars on amazon and it's going to cost about 15 minutes so i encourage you get some velcro do some cable management for your md and um it'll make their life easier so uh that's it for me tonight it is 10 o'clock i'm gonna get back here early in the morning and work on material so my production stuff is done at this point and tomorrow morning is going to be all about material so see you in the morning okay look it took me 15 minutes but that's cleaned up a little bit some things are inherently messy. You know, it's hard to clean that up, but you know, tie a lot of those off and then manage these cables here a little bit better from the audience perspective where that's just a little bit cleaner. Again, nothing major and there's a good chance that no one is even gonna notice it in the morning and that's fine. Just, but it's helpful, cleans things up a little bit and 10 to 15 minutes here and there Makes a big difference. Okay, now I'll see you in the morning. Good morning. It is 6.15 Sunday morning, and I thought I would just show you how my slider works or what the concept is in case you were curious. So I've set up the slider here, and I'm just using two very cheap tripods. You can probably use any kind of tripod you want. Um, set those up, and then down here on this uh, thing, I go and I set the start point and end point. And then I just set it to a loop, and I've got it on 100% speed. So what it does now is it is just going to rotate back and forth to one end, and then back to the other. Now, I've got this plugged into power, and then I've got my camera on a dummy battery so that it can pretty much go forever without needing new battery, anything like that. Then uh, the other aspect of this is this bar in the middle. Um, that uh, dictates how much... Uh, the camera rotates as it slides through the entirety of the slider. So if I have it flat, like see how it's going closer on this side and it's kind of angled like this, if you will. So what that does is that creates kind of this motion as I go around, it does that. Now if it were flat, it would just slide back and forth <clears throat> without changing. No, yeah, I'm getting sick. Don't, don't talk about it. Um, so by adjusting that bar and then it's got these little tension rods, uh, in the middle so I can adjust that bar to very extremely you know pivot as it goes through the motion or it can slide pretty straight I have it just very gently 
um, you know, changing as it goes through there. So I've got slider set up. I've got it hooked into their HDMI. I can't remember if I have to switch it to 60 frames a second. That may only be over wireless or different things that sometimes um, the systems want to, you know, read that format in. I've got my symbol set up, snare. I'm gonna clean up a little bit and then practice. So again, I've got until about eight o'clock when the band gets here. So I've got a lot of time but I really want to get comfortable with the material, be confident in it by the time they get here where I'm not focused on anything else. So I'm going to get to work. Also, because I got time this morning, here is a little GoPro setup that I use all the time for time lapses. And I haven't really cleaned it up because it's out of sight today, but I call it Endless GoPro. So basically, I've got this Andy Cine uh, power plate right here uh, that takes MPF and it's got um, D tap out. It's got USB uh C in and out and then it's got USB A out and so I'm going USB A out into my GoPro so that massive NPF battery now I have thinner ones but again since it's hidden today it's behind this column I don't really care what it looks like but this will right now it's just charging the GoPro but this will time lapse or record forever so I've got a full SD card in there 128 gigs so it's going to get this wider than this shot but it's going to get a you know continuous maybe two hour shot so I can just leave it all service and let it record but yeah it's just that little Andy Cine plate right there um, that powers the whole thing so endless GoPro pretty easy now uh, again I have a link to this slider and everything that it needs uh, to make this work in the description of this video so like that little ball head right there um, that doesn't come with a slider but I've got a suggestion for that um, and then the tripods and then the other slider that I use you guys ask about is this one now this is a much more specialized slider, and I really just use it for small spaces. This is the Edelkrone um, slider, and I've got this linked in the description as well. It's great, and so I'll put it like on a tripod. Uh, the only problem is it's got a uh, you know, weight limit. So, you know, if I have my A7 IV and like the 16 and the 35 lens, it's not that the, um, the slider can't handle it, but like a regular tripod, like a thin tripod, like I'm using this Manfrotto tripod, um, that I love, but a kind of normal light duty tripod cannot handle that much weight. Now, if you have a massive tripod, then you probably don't have a super limited space, right? So it's kind of like the neat, the times I need to use the small slider is when I have lots of, you know, uh, limitations on my space, like a small space, but I need a heavy duty tripod to use the slider really well. So that's why I have to use like the A7C with a 16 um, millimeter lens. That's a small enough uh, form factor and weight that the slider and the camera and the lens can be held by the uh, tripod. Anyways, those are my two sliders and a couple of production things. My friend. Woo! All right, just finished rehearsal. Um, and it's feeling good, but this cage is a struggle bubble. As you can hear it, even now probably through this microphone, you can hear how tough it is with no insulation, man. It just all sounds like a squashed overhead, but man, it is what it is. So um, we're going to try to get some stuff in before Easter and at least get some dampening, you know, um, I don't know. I'll talk about long-term solution. I would love to know if you have a perfect scenario for uh, isolation in a situation like this in a drum cage, DIY drum cage. I've seen these things, you know, using the rock wall insulation, create like, you know, three inch thick panels. I've seen using two inch panels, but leaving some space between that and the ceiling. So I'd love to hear your thoughts if you have any on uh, how to go about treating the cage in the most space efficient way possible. So yeah, um, church is going to start in about 30 minutes. It's going to be a good day.